This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesome Chat is brought to you by Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. <laughs> Hey guys, it is the awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, a video producer, podcaster here in the Pittsburgh area. And this is the show where we get to have a lot of uh, great conversations with people in and around and uh, sometimes outside, sometimes very, very far outside of Pittsburgh, but maybe they've, they've uh, traveled through here recently. And we've got a very exciting one here coming up today. But first, please check out all the uh, all the rest of the conversation. Subscribe to the show over uh, on your iTunes podcast. Uh, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, video versions on the AwesomeCast YouTube and Facebook page. And you can check out everything over at AwesomeCast.com. Uh, you can drop us a line, AwesomeCast, on the Twitter, on the Facebook uh, on the Facebook group. We have a great conversation going on there with recent news and technology and, and, and cool things you guys are finding out there. And of course, thanks so much to everybody that's uh, supporting us on our Patreon, Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Literally helping us keep the lights on here in the studio. So my guest this week is uh, somebody I had the fortune to film their uh, keynote at the Tech Now conference uh, for nonprofits here in the Pittsburgh area a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she is the author of the Happy Healthy Nonprofit Strategies to Impact Without Burnout, and that was a lot of what her uh, conversation was about. Thank you from Alaska joining us today. Maybe one one of our longest distance uh, uh, guests, Elisa Sherman, is joining us right now. How are you doing? I'm doing great. It's <laughs> freezing cold here already. Snow on the ground. That's amazing. The connection's looking fantastic from uh, from Alaska over there. Good. So, and I was so glad to uh, you know ha- uh, you know fortunate to have your uh, uh, conversation here in Pittsburgh at this conference. And um, you, you know, can you talk a little bit more about that? You know, uh, the general concept around this like digital burnout that you guys are talking about. Well, we like to call it tech wellness. It's the positive side of trying to get a grip on your technology because we never had such intimate relationships with our tech before. And now it's gone into our hands. It's with us wherever we go. We're constantly, almost compulsively checking on it to figure out who's getting in touch and what should we pay attention to, what's going on in the world, what's happening with our friends, what's happening in our industry. I mean, it just keeps going. And so what I was conveying to the group in Pittsburgh and what is in the book that I co-wrote with Beth Cantor, Happy Healthy Nonprofit, is just that we need a tech diet. We need tech mindfulness so we aren't consumed by our technology so Mm. that's it in a a nutshell absolutely and and i know there's been a lot of debate these days about um i guess the ethics around what facebook does because you know they're obviously making this thing for us to want to go back to and want to keep checking and things like that right um i mean and that's and that's really kind of uh you know people are concerned with you know should they be doing this or isn't the job of the company to get you to use their product more Well, it absolutely is. And I happen to, the week that I spoke in Pittsburgh, there happened to be a video that came out, a TED Talk by Tristan Harris, who I believe his title formerly was at Google, uh, the design ethicist, I think. So he was looking at the ethical aspects of the technical design of Google at the time. And what he says, Google, Facebook, and Apple in particular are all creating this system, if you will, technical systems to try to make all of us want to check those services more, that we're no longer in control of our impulses because they have rooms filled with 100 programmers and they're all trying to figure out what is your behavior And what would tempt you to keep on clicking and keep on scrolling and keep on reading? So knowing that this is a scientific technical effort, I think it's pretty 
freaky. <laughs> and so it's a really great talk, but it really opens your eyes up to the fact that, yeah, these companies are in the business of keeping your attention and your attention is now fragmented and at the mercy of somebody else. Mm hmm. So what is uh, what is kind of like the, you know, you go into this a bit uh, in your talks and, and presumably your book as well. You know what? So how do we as individuals uh, um, kind of combat that? Um, you know, how do, how do we kind of uh, uh, take stock of that and 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 know when it's happening to us? Well, it's about mindfulness and mindfulness is this fuzzy little word that kind of gets lumped in with meditation. So if you meditate, you do become more mindful, but mm -hmm. mindfulness isn't about meditating. It is about an awareness, an awareness at this present moment. And we tend not to literally be aware of what we're doing in the present moment. We move too quickly. We're always looking ahead. We're sifting and scrolling so much that we're not aware. So a lot of it has to do with understanding the dynamic of what's happening and then stopping, pausing, stepping back. And so one of the techniques that right away I recommend to help us be more mindful of our tech is to put it down, mm -hmm. to turn it off, like literally, <laughs> not just turn, turn it to silent, but literally turn it off. And that gives us a breather. It gives our brain a break. And it gives us that space that we used to have all the time. And we just took it for granted. Some of us call it boredom. But we've gotten to the point where we can't even be alone with ourselves. We can't even be quiet because we have to be constantly connected and on. So that's, I think, a scary thing, too. Absolutely. I know. I know for me I, and, and you also work in the digital space for me, that's kind of the movie theater is my escape. Right. Because that's the time when the phone goes off and I concentrate on one thing for a change. Right. Um, you know, it, it, and it seems like you, know, you need to do that more and more because sitting at home on a TV, I'm seeing notifications, I'm checking on Facebook during the commercials and things like that. Right. So, you know, it, it is kind of like you need to adopt that. And even I've noticed you know, I go to my phone and I'm checking Facebook and I'm checking the news and things. I'm not going to the things I enjoy, even that are sitting on my phone, like video games I enjoy. Right. Like yeah. it's a, it's a, just one of those things that I've noticed in, in like in where, it, you know, I grasp onto, oh, I'm going to see what Facebook is, even though I've reread it, like seen the same articles like uh, uh, 10 times in that day. Yeah, it's all back to the compulsiveness mm -hmm. that we aren't pausing thinking about and contemplating what it is we want to do next, we're just mechanically going through motions over and over and over again. I mean, I am at the moment finding that my, the entire way that I use my smartphone has transformed completely from even just six months ago. So I discovered the headline news, if you swipe on your iPhone, if you swipe right, Suddenly, this headline news pops up. It's Apple News, I guess. I had never even looked at it before. And now they've got me. They keep on putting up these headlines that they think I'm going to be interested in. And then I get sucked in deeply into that. And I love being informed. But it's gotten beyond information that we can actually use. It's gotten into information overload that then causes all sorts of other problems, like an attention deficit, the inability to just focus on anything else. So there's a good and bad about all of this. And a lot of it has to do with knowing that it's up to us to control what we do with technology and not let the technology take over or take control. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think it's important to pull it, point out, uh, those not familiar with you, you work in this space. Uh, I'm on your, 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 <laughs> your site, of course, and you know, you're, you're, you're listed as a web pioneer, a digital diva, and a tech passionista. So you, <laughs> you are very much ingrained in this, much like I am with my business in, in, in yeah. technology and video and online, right? So, so how has that how are you able to, I guess the word is reconcile the, uh, uh, the mindfulness with this, with what you need to do for, you know, basically your, your, your living. Well, you kind of use the right word. How do I reconcile this? And a mm -hmm. lot of it again is thinking hard about it and realizing that on a personal level, there are only certain things that where I find real value having social networks and being engaged. So on a professional level, I have to be on 
a lot, a lot more than even my family wants to see. And I always have to announce it. And I do that deliberately for them at a, as a courtesy, but also for myself as, remember, this is work. And I'll say, I just got a text from a client. I need to post this right away. That's what I'm doing right now. Well, just yesterday, my daughter looked over my shoulder and she said, mom, you're just scrolling through Facebook. I'm like, oh, <laughs> I have to be more aware. So I think part of it is just setting some boundaries for myself on a personal level and knowing that when I am engaged in social media or using my smartphone for client work, that I have to also set boundaries. It's really a lot of it is setting those parameters and then also having accountability. So my family, for me, helps me stay accountable. And my daughter, uh, she currently does not have her phone at the moment because it's me trying to help her learn to be more mindful. And yet she has learned enough about what, what she can and can't do that she can look at what I do and point that out to me. So having accountability buddies is helpful. That's awesome. And, and, and setting your kids up to be your tattletales on yourself. That's pretty good too. (laughs) Awesome. You know, and, and, you know, that's interesting too, because again, you know, that scroll through effect, you know, uh, you know, I'm familiar with mindfulness with some of the projects we've done here on the network, including, you know, our friends at fishing without bait. And, And we talk about kind of intentionality, right? Is there kind of something to, I'm not going to be on Facebook just to be on Facebook. I want to be on with a purpose, you know, whether, you know, obviously for you and I, it's, I'm going to be on with the purpose of doing this task for a client. Right. But most aren't in that. Most are more there socially, it seems right. Uh, You know, obviously we're getting in those traps even in our professions. Uh, You know, what can you say a little bit about that? You know, being on these devices with the intention to do X, but then getting distracted to why, I guess. Well, yeah, well, distraction is incredibly easy. Mm-hmm. And you need the same way that you would develop any good habit or break any bad habit, you need some cues, some triggers and cues that can help remind you. So for example, something very simple, set an egg timer, or set uh, some kind of timer or alarm on your phone even that for 10 minutes, you don't really need to spend more than 10 minutes in a social network at any given time. So give yourself that 10 or 15 minutes. And then when the alarm goes off, shut it off, walk away, step away from the smartphone and computer. By doing that, it's this outside reminder. And it also helps you see what is it that's sucking you in when that alarm goes off Figure out where you are and what you're doing and how lost you truly are. For me, I have pretty much gotten into a pattern of once a week, I will personally post to my Facebook profile and not necessarily on a certain day. It's just once a week, I allow myself the chance to share something personal with all my thousands of friends that I'm connected with. So that to me is sufficient Anything beyond that, it becomes like the same content burden that I have to carry for my clients. Mm-hmm. But, but once a week, it's fine. I spend no more than one minute a day going through a news feed because, frankly, you're not even seeing what's happening in real time. You're seeing what Facebook thinks you want to see. So I try to skip around and dig around and just see what's popping up for some of my friends and going in and making a quick comment so, just so they know I'm thinking of them. And that's it. And that's taken a long time to hone down to that. So drilling down to that kind of minimalism in social media activity for personal side has been a real challenge, but also it's quite rewarding because it's no longer that time suck. hmm Absolutely. Uh, I was really impressed with, uh, you know, again, uh, please, uh, it, it's a, freely available at the TechNow Conference 2017, uh, your, your discussion there. And you talked about a lot of the tools and a lot of these concepts, uh, very in depth. And you talked about like some of the apps that can kind of help you along the way. Um, I, I know that I remember there was one about, uh, uh, you know, telling exactly what kind of things you were doing on, I can't remember if it was computer or the phone that you talked about at the time. Computer, that was Mm. rescue time. So rescue time is something you can load onto your computer and it tracks all the software that you've opened and what sites you're going to. So it will classify 
Gmail and social networks as time wasters, it would classify Word, PowerPoint, Excel as productive or creative time. So that is really interesting because we're just as mindless about how we use the software on our computer. I think I told you right before we started this interview, I'm closing all these windows. Well, I kept closing and closing and closing and there's windows behind windows (laughs) behind windows. And that is me not being mindful of how I'm using my own laptop, much less how I would use my smartphone. On the smartphone, on the iPhone, there's an app called Moment. And that's the one that tells you exactly how many times you pick up your iPhone each day, which is frightening (laughs) for many people and sometimes for myself. And I also find that the days that I think I'm online a lot or too much, don't compare to the days that I don't. The days that I don't think I'm using it are the ones when I'm not being mindful and I'm actually using it more than the other days. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's amazing. Um, Kind of moving forward, like, you know, obviously, I think it was brought up at, at the at the conference. You know, things like Apple is is trying to implement things like uh, uh, you know, do not disturb while driving. You know, obviously a big issue uh, in, in people's safety in, in, around here. And uh, you know, you see things like that. Do you see you know? Do you see a future where these companies are going to start kind of stepping up to kind of have more assistance with the mindfulness, or do you see them just kind of leaning in and trying to get? more and more out of this. So like where where do where do they start taking up yeah. responsibility for these issues? Well, it's kind of like the fossil fuel <laughs> situation. <laughs> Car companies will pay lip service to renewable resources. Oil and gas companies will pay lip service. But the bottom line is they pay attention to their bottom line. And what they really want you to do is burn as much fuel as possible, get the biggest car that you possibly can, and just spend, spend, spend. So it's a little bit hard to even think that a company that is making its money off of your attention, off of your eyeballs, looking at their information, their content on their screen, that they're going to truly have a vested interest in helping you break those habits. Their, their vested interest in, is in helping you form really, really bad habits to constantly use their services. So it's, it's also sad that we would put the responsibility on either companies or our government to manage our own behavior. Now, Obviously, to a certain extent, the government does that. But when it comes to something as as intimate and personal as the way we use our technology, do we really want outside influences, either negatively or even positively? Can we not begin to educate ourselves and train ourselves to do what's healthy and do what's right? That's the age-old question. But you know that companies and the government that they get involved in our lives in many ways that we know of and many ways that we don't. So it's more and more important that this conversation gets bigger. So that it is, it is. So to, yes. to put some pressure on them um, to do their electric car mode of this situation. <laughs> Well, the consumer does speak with the pocketbook, really. Mm -hmm. If we want this, if we truly want this, then we can influence what companies and what our government does. So a lot of it is education. You know, a lot of it is education within the home, the family. It's role modeling. Any of us who are parents should be, be good role models, positive role models for our children. We have a rule, don't double screen. That means don't be on a different screen while you're watching something. So they're, they're watching Netflix and they're on their smartphones. Well, that's kind of what Netflix wants you to do, particularly if you're on Twitter with the hashtag, you know, scandal. <laughs> that's, that's what these entertainment companies are wishing that you would do. But frankly, they're just talking to their friends mm-hmm. while and maybe even watching the show together with their friends and texting back and forth or Snapchatting back and forth about the show. But that sort of division of attention is very scary. And so we as parents, we as adults out in the world should be modeling good behavior. We start with ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, well, uh, from that, uh, so where... What's the first little thing people need to do in this situation? Oh, my gosh. What's the first little kind of tip 
to, to kind of look at look at what how they're using things to to make some better choices. Well, I, the one that I always go to is actually the most powerful and often the most difficult. Shut it off, turn it off completely. So that could mean for one hour a day, just completely power down and turn off and shut the the lid on your laptop, walk away, step away from your technology and literally go for a walk, Mm -hmm. whether it be walking inside of a building, like right now it's pretty snowy and icy outside. So the idea of walking for me right now is a big procedure, but even just walking around your house, walking around your office, down the halls, up the stairs, getting some movement in your life, it resets your brain. It gets you thinking of something different. And the other thing I like to talk about is go analog. Find that one thing that you used to do, like building model airplanes or painting pictures or taking a pottery class or a flower arrangement class, something tangible with your hands, something completely analog, coloring in a coloring book with your kids, Do something like that on a daily basis. My daughter makes slime and she's so enamored with the feeling of it. She always says the word satisfying. It's so satisfying, mom. Well, what I notice when she is making her slime and manipulating the slime, you know, which is glue and some other ingredients, she is analog. She's totally analog and it's completely tangible. And I love that because it's just breaking that cycle of constant electronic. So I recommend that to grownups. Just go play. Go play. Because you need time to reset your brain. You need time away. Your eyes need time to rest. Not just your brain, but your eyes. Your body needs time to rest from just sitting in a sedentary position. And even walking can be a rest for the different parts of your nervous system and brain that are so overloaded because of your technology. Absolutely. I think, I think my equivalent of the slime uh, tactile feedback thing is, is bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. Yeah. There you go. Very tactile, <laughs> very satisfying. Very. Just excited it whenever is. that comes into a, in a package, you know, so. That's true. That's true. There's all <laughs> kinds of these little, but it's that tactile thing. And I do know that when you start to do something that you did maybe as a child, like the coloring or playing with Play-Doh, just go to the store and buy some Play-Doh, for goodness sake. Buy a couple of those little plastic devices where you can squeeze the Play-Doh through and build things and make spaghetti. Just do something like that, even if you don't have kids. Trust me, there is something really invigorating. It opens up all kinds of pathways in your brain for creativity it just gives your nervous system a rest in a way that technology will not let you do. Absolutely. Well, hey, hey thank you so much for having a good, another awesome conversation with me about this. Again, I think it's something that people need to pay a little bit more attention to these days. And I'm hoping we're helping get the word out a little bit here. Well, thank you so much. All I have to really say is get well soon, everybody, because this thing is, this thing is, is taking us over. It can make us sick, but it can also really help us as we all know, which is why we're so obsessed with this technology, but just uh, go on that tech diet and pay attention to your tech wellness. Awesome. So where can people find out more about uh, this topic with you and, uh, and other things you're into? I know you have your fingers in a lot of stuff online. Yeah, I I do a lot of things. So I have my own website, alizasherman.com. There's the happyhealthynonprofit.org where it talks a little bit more about our book and how we talk about individual and organizational self-care or we care, including tech wellness. And literally Google my name and I'll pop up in a lot of different areas around technology, social media, and other things. Awesome. Definitely want to look out for a lot of great conversations there online. Get the book and learn more about this and get uh, yourself healthy. Don't fall into the digital rat hole. Uh, along with the rest of us, we're all recovering from this. It, it, it is so it's so tough because we we've been so excited about new things and new things, and and I think we've kind of gotten swept up in a lot of this stuff. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, and of course, if you guys want to check out any other of these great conversations we're happening about technology. 
things around technology um, and a lot of people doing some really, really awesome things. Please uh, follow all the awesome chats over at awesomecast.com. Check out the uh, uh, past uh, uh, catalog of the people we've talked with. And of course, let us know anybody you think we should be talking with here on the awesome chat on our Twitter, awesomecast or at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Thank you so much to my awesome guest. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.